Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Dr. Julie Massey? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, consider supporting me on Patreon, and check out my podcast. I will put the relevant links in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case. I'll move to the timeline of the alleged crimes, and I'll offer my analysis. Starting with the background, at the time of making this video, Julie Mazzi is a licensed homeopathic doctor who lives in Napa, California. She's 41 years old. She is the chief executive officer and chief financial officer of Julie Mazzi, N.D., a naturopathic doctor corporation. That's how it was listed. She has an undergraduate degree and a master's degree in communication from Portland State University. She went to medical school at the National University of Natural Medicine in Portland, Oregon. She operates a medical practice in California. Now moving to the timeline of the alleged crime. According to court documents, the case against Julie Mazzi started in April of 2021 when someone noticed their family members bought so-called immunization pellets from Mazzi. The family members told the individual that Mazzi said the pellets contained the COVID-19 virus and would create an antibody response in someone who consumed them. The individual went to the authorities, which led to an investigation. There were two other complainants as well, and the authorities recorded a conversation between Mazzi and an undercover agent. On July 14, 2021, Julie Mazzi was arrested for allegedly participating in two activities selling what she referred to as COVID-19 homeoprophylaxis immunization pellets, a fake product that was supposed to prevent COVID-19, and selling falsified COVID-19 vaccination cards for the FDA-authorized Moderna vaccine. Essentially, the allegation here is that she provided a fake vaccine and fabricated a vaccination card for a real vaccine. Mazi was charged with one count of wire fraud and one count of false statements related to Healthcare matters. These are federal crimes. This is the first federal criminal fraud prosecution related to fake immunization and vaccine record cards. Mazzi is facing 20 years if convicted of the wire fraud charge and five years if convicted of the count of making false statements related to healthcare matters. The allegations against Mazzi suggest she defrauded and endangered the public by preying on fears and spreading misinformation about FDA authorized vaccinations, and put people's lives at risk by peddling fake treatments. Court documents allege that Mazi offered immunizations and falsified immunization cards that she claimed would satisfy the requirements for California schools. The false immunization card scheme was fairly sophisticated in that Mazi allegedly provided customers specific vaccine lot numbers that they could enter onto the card and told them how to select dates for their purported vaccinations, which would not arouse suspicion. Allegedly, Mazi participated in a consensually monitored and recorded phone call with a customer. A court document containing the transcript is available. Here are a few selected items from the transcript. Some of this is paraphrased and not exact quotes. Mazi admits that what she's doing is more than an ethical stretch. She implied that she was happy to do it. She was just stepping up to the plate to offer fabricated vaccination records. The customer said it was important to them to be able to show that they were vaccinated. Mazi responded by saying, I know it's becoming quite the climate, suggesting that government policies that protect people from COVID-19 are pervasive and somehow harmful. I wonder if she feels the same way about seatbelt laws. They have become quite the climate as well. The customer stated that the pellets took place of the vaccine and he would not need another one. Mazi replied, yeah, exactly. So she reaffirmed the customer's incorrect understanding of the product. Mazi also suggested that the dose for the pellets was the same for babies. The customer made a $243 purchase from Mazi. The customer received the pellets and four vaccination cards from Mazi in the mail. In a second recorded conversation a week later, Mazi allegedly told the customer to put her name on the cards, meaning Mazi's name. The customer asked how the pellets were supposed to work. Mazi claimed that COVID-19 disease particles were in the pellets and taking the pellets would grant lifetime immunity to COVID-19. A false claim, but 
That's allegedly what she stated. Mazi went on to explain how to actually consume the pellets. She said you unscrew the cap from the vial, pour roughly two to four pellets out, and place them under your tongue. She said you don't have to be precise and have exactly four pellets. The exact number of pellets doesn't matter because it is like an energy medicine. So more pellets do not necessarily mean a stronger effect. So under this line of reasoning, I suppose Mazi would try to plug her hairdryer into a 220 volt outlet. If the level of energy doesn't matter, then what's the harm? According to the authorities, Mazi's operation earned $221,000 over 1,242 transactions over the course of 16 months. Only about $7,600 was related specifically to the alleged COVID immunization scam. Now moving to my analysis. Julie Mazzi's website offers some insight into her general philosophy as far as homeopathic treatment. Here are just a few statements on her website that I found interesting. What patients first notice about Dr. Mazzi is that she radiates the vibrant health she is committed to helping her patients achieve. If she's convicted, I suppose she'll have to change that to radiating a vibrant shade of orange. From a young age, she felt called to be a healer and teacher. Her spirit of investigation came alive when she discovered her strong connection to the plant world. I'm not sure exactly what this means. I pictured some kid being abandoned in the woods and being raised by a maple tree or something, or maybe a person who has their life saved by their philodendron. I'm not really sure. When she was in college, she fell in love with a young man who had cystic fibrosis. She witnessed how conventional medical science failed him. She started researching natural treatments. This is a popular theme I see with alternative treatment people, a tragic tale of how science failed. Although it's often accompanied by a story about how the natural treatments succeeded in helping that person, that's not evident here. Rather, we see she just goes on to study natural treatments. Her website contains a long list of conditions that she can naturally treat, including ADHD, cancer, stress, and heavy metal toxicity. I found the last item oddly specific. The concern with Mazi's alleged behavior is that it's building on misinformation about COVID-19, exploiting people who have a misunderstanding of the science behind vaccination, like anti-vaccination conspiracy theorists. This is a large group of people who are particularly vulnerable to scams, like the one Mazi allegedly perpetrated. Allegedly, Mazi falsely claimed that the real vaccines were toxic, so the ones that were FDA authorized weren't good for people, but her magic pellets were. I find it interesting that these conspiracy theorists are concerned about vaccines, but they're okay with what Mazi was allegedly selling which she claimed contained the actual COVID-19 virus. One would think they would be more afraid of the actual virus. Moving to the next question, why did the federal government pursue Mazi as the first case with these charges related to COVID immunization records? Why are they trying to make an example out of her specifically? Alternative treatment promoters are everywhere. There are a number of self-proclaimed spiritual gurus who promote unproven items which they claim prevent COVID. Why weren't they arrested? I don't know why they chose to pursue Mazzi with federal charges. Some would argue that this is a situation that could have been handled with a cease and desist letter from the state. But here are my thoughts as to why she's being prosecuted. Mazzi is a licensed clinician, therefore the public would trust her more than just some person off the street claiming to have a product that grants immunity to COVID. Mazzi made incredibly specific claims about her product like saying it granted lifetime immunity. But I think the part that really got her in trouble was the idea that she fabricated immunization records. I think with a lot of these alternative treatment people, the authorities assume that they believe what they are promoting, like the sellers themselves are gullible. Maybe someone told them the products are effective and they believed it, and now they're trying to sell them to other people. What Mazi allegedly did is much different. She acknowledged that she was more than breaking the ethical code through her behavior. It seems deliberate, not just like a misunderstanding. Also, if whoever sold the pellets to Mazi told her they were effective, Mazi should know better. She has the education to realize the pellets do not grant immunity to COVID-19. Next question, if Mazi is found guilty, what should the penalty be? 
A few factors play into this. Her state of mind. I don't know if Mazzy really believes in her products. Like, to some degree, is she the victim as well? What claims, if any, were made to Mazzy about what the pellets are made of and how they function? And her level of remorse. I don't see this as a 25 years in prison case. I view it more as a deferred prosecution case. This would still allow her to be punished, but not have her career completely destroyed. I feel as though the government made its point here. If she's found guilty, it seems likely her license would be sanctioned, which could include it being revoked. Plus, there's the whole going to prison part. I think I just have trouble seeing how Mozzie's alleged offenses, although serious, fit in with other offenders in federal prison. Like there would be a bunch of inmates sitting around the table in the cafeteria in the prison. One would talk about how they kidnapped somebody. Another about how they ran a $10 million Ponzi scheme. Another person was a bomber. And then there's somebody like Mazi saying that she sold fake immunization cards. Are the other prisoners going to say, you monster, you make us look like angels? Probably not. Every offense is on a continuum. And what Mazi allegedly did is simply not as serious as many other crimes committed by federal inmates. The other problem with punishing her severely is that she'll become a martyr for the anti-vaccination conspiracy theorist. Under a deferred prosecution, they could have her say things like, she's sorry, she was wrong. They could convert her to the side of science and reason. So there's some benefit to not being as harsh in the situation. I suppose one could make another argument here, though. If she was guilty, she was really playing with fire. She was risking people's lives. COVID-19 is no joke, and teaching people how to circumvent immunization rules is not a game. Another element that really hurts her is that she said the fake pellets would work for babies. This is a particularly reckless statement to make. A good argument could be made for prison time. So again, I'm not only prison time trained, but I can see how someone could look at this case and think that's where Mazi belongs, if she is actually guilty. The next question, what type of mindset is necessary to do what Mazi allegedly did? Anti-science people believe a lot of strange things and unsupported claims, but seldom act on those beliefs in a criminal way. It's one thing to believe that magic pellets are better than a vaccine. It's something else to put that false belief into action, especially as someone who the public is supposed to trust. In looking at the court documents, there is this sense that Mazi may have viewed herself as one of the good guys, like she was helping the anti-vaccine rebels to defeat the evil government or something. It's not spelled out, but there are little clues, like when she said that she was stepping up to the plate, almost like she believed herself to be a hero for allegedly breaking the law. I believe that many people like this truly believe they are fighting against evil conspirators and helping people. It makes them more convincing when they are trying to sell fake products. What lessons can we learn in this case? I think this case illustrates the dangers of misinformation. People are all too eager to believe something that anyone should have known was false. Clearly, there are no magic pellets that prevent people from getting COVID-19, but people are all too happy to hand over money to purchase these magic pellets. Anti-vaccination people start out with a belief and then look for others who are like-minded. They look for evidence to support their belief rather than logically analyzing the available data. The situation with Mazi illustrates yet another example of the dangers of anti-science thinking. Those are my thoughts on the case of Dr. Julie Mazi. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.